Manufactured by Huawei, the Google Nexus 6P came out in 2015, succeeding the last year's Nexus 6, and would be the final Google flagship before the first Pixel. And what a flagship it was, hosting many of the best Android features available, all with that nice, clean, stock software from Google to give the purest possible experience. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the Google Nexus 6P. What made this phone so popular, and how does it hold up today? Why exactly is the Nexus 6P the 6P? Well, apparently the P stands for premium. The truth, however, is more likely that Google couldn't call it the Nexus 7, as that name belonged to their line of 7-inch tablets. Not exactly a move with a ton of foresight, but it is just a name. The 6P launched in the September of 2015 and came out alongside the Nexus 5X, which also had a weird name and was meant to be the cheaper option to the 6P and a successor to the Nexus 5, a phone that had come out two years prior. It was similar to the 6P in that it had the same camera and software, but it was plastic instead of aluminum, had a lower quality LCD display, and across the board, slower tech specs. The Nexus 6P was the cream of the crop, as it were, and one of the best Androids money could buy in 2015, coming with Android 6 Marshmallow right out of the box, completely stock, with no bloat whatsoever. Ah, the Google Nexus line. Saying the name may bring up a whole multitude of feelings for those familiar with the devices. From nostalgia to frustration with a number of hardware issues, the Nexus line of smartphones has always been one of my favorites because of the really interesting idea behind them. To have each phone be made by a different manufacturer, but designed by Google. So the Nexus 1 was HTC, the Nexus S and the Galaxy Nexus were Samsung, the Nexus 4 and 5 was LG, the Nexus 6 was Motorola, and then the 5X LG and 6P Huawei. It's just really cool, and while I understand why Google wanted to be the sole brand represented in their newer Pixel line, there's a definite enticement in following a line of smartphones that all differ from each other so prominently, regardless of being under the same umbrella and designed by one company. If you have a bad phone one year, there's a real chance the next one will be completely different because it'll be made by someone completely different. And so if you have a bad experience with a Google Pixel, which let's be real, uh, there's a decent chance with that considering the many issues they've had over the years, the next year having just another Google Pixel with another number attached to it might not be as appealing as if it was a completely different company like uh, LG versus Huawei versus versus Motorola, etc. It's not as possible to just shift the blame onto someone else. You're gonna remember that problem was with the Google Pixel, not just an LG phone. Of course, ideally, you just don't have problems in the first place, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's not gonna be the case. I mentioned frustrations, and one of the most common issues was boot looping, especially in LG phones. The Nexus 5X is known for boot looping. It's a horrible oversight, so that didn't really have any easy fix. But hey, the Nexus 6P luckily was made by Huawei, right? Right? So owners shouldn't have to worry about boot looping. Well, uh, no, apparently they should. There was actually a number of reported hardware issues from the phone bending easier than the iPhone 6 Plus to microphone problems to the device locking itself in landscape mode and a strange issue where the battery would suddenly drop to 0% to life. And of course, even some boot looping. It's difficult to gauge just how widespread these problems were, but there was a class action lawsuit that resulted in Google and Huawei compensating owners of faulty phones with up to $400. So at least there was some kind of resolution. But in my time with the 6P, I haven't had any of these issues. In fact, I've been quite impressed with the device, and I'm happy to report that it feels quite snappy and pleasant to use, in spite of the age, with top-of-the-line 2015 specs easily able to handle the old Android 8 software. Yeah, Android 8. Like many Androids, the Nexus 6P only got two major software iterations past Marshmallow in Android 7 Nougat, and then in 2017, Android 8 Oreo. It's a pity, to be sure, and I feel like Google really should have done better, given these were supposed to be their phones developed and optimized by the maker of Android themselves. And I guess in all fairness, the 2016 Pixel would get further updates than just the normal two. The design of the Nexus 6P is really unique and might look a little familiar to a certain brand new phone. Yeah, that's right, the 6P has an uncanny resemblance to the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, with that flat rectangular camera bump near the top of the device. The similarities kind of end there, but it's still very much a standard out aesthetic choice that really can't be seen in 
than any other smartphone. And I'll be honest, I kind of dig it. Yeah, it looks weird, especially on the Pixel 6, and the camera bump is a lot less subtle on that phone, but it's unique, and I'd prefer Google do their own thing rather than copying the square camera bump off the iPhone like they've been doing in the last couple of years. Oh, and one major benefit to the Nexus 6P that didn't carry over to the Pixel 6, there's a headphone jack. Truly spectacular innovation right there. One thing newer Pixels do have, however, is USB-C, which is indeed on the 6P. Something that was just starting to become more and more prevalent in 2015, and so it's really nice to see it here. It's such a small factor, but it really helps the phone feel a lot more modern. The body of the Nexus 6P, beyond the glass camera bump, is made up of smooth, curved aluminum with flat edges, a textured power button that I absolutely love and should have been on the 5X, and some busy branding with the large Nexus wordmark scrawled horizontally across the center, and the Huawei logo underneath it near the bottom of the device. There's a nice looking fingerprint sensor right above the Nexus branding, and it works really well. It feels natural to use, with my finger automatically resting on it when holding the phone, and that sensor reads my print quickly and consistently, bringing me straight to the home screen, pretty darn solid for 2015. For colors, there were four options, all being very, very standard for a 2015 phone, in silver, black, white, and gold, and of course I have the black model here. I got this phone off eBay a couple months back for about $75 American, a fair enough price given it was top of the line six years ago, and I could honestly see this working really well as a more budget-oriented smartphone for certain users. All in all though, this phone is in nice condition, and I quite appreciate the design. In the very least, just for how different it is, even from the 2014 Nexus 6 by Motorola. Turning to the front of the device, we get an absolutely gorgeous and huge 5.7-inch OLED display, boasting a resolution of 1440 by 2560 and pixel density of 518 pixels per inch. This is a very crispy screen with all colors and everything looking really fantastic. It might not beat out modern screens, especially on newer Samsungs or iPhones, but it still looks really nice, and I can't see anyone having issues with it even if they had to use it today, except for maybe those bezel sizes. Again, this is a 2015 phone, and thus to keep to the trends from the era, it has thick bezels that at least host dual speakers, as opposed to putting absolutely nothing on there like the next year's Pixel. Seriously, why get rid of the front speaker? If you're gonna waste all that space down there, you might as well slap on a home button at least. But I digress, and uh, all this was very standard for a 2015 smartphone, from the colors to the design to the aluminum, it all screams of around 2014, 2015, 2016. This is a large phone, significantly larger than the Nexus 5X, which is still a decent 5.2 inches. The phone's a bit big for me, and I do have fairly small hands, but it's not uncomfortable to use per se, and I found myself getting used to it pretty quickly. The OLED is nice to have, providing much richer colors and truer blacks in comparison to the LCD 5X, and this is a feature that definitely would have been worth the money back in 2015. Although nowadays, if you ever for some reason find yourself in the position of buying a 6P or any used OLED smartphone, just make sure you watch out for burn-in. This happens when an image is left on the screen too long, causing remnants of said image to remain permanently. But my Nexus 6B seems to be okay, and even for phones that do have burn-in, typically it doesn't affect the user experience unless it's really bad. Battery life on the Nexus 6B should be pretty decent, assuming you don't suffer from the battery issues that apparently are not uncommon. Although my phone seems fine, and I don't think you would see it in too many phones that are still floating around today. The size of the battery is solid at 3,450 milliamp hours, and at launch this phone would have more than lasted you the day, and even now it very well could be good enough. Though because the phones are 6 years old, that battery has likely degraded, especially if the phone was well used over the years, and so that's something to watch out for. These batteries are a hassle to replace, you can't just pull off the back, so for most situations you're probably just stuck with what you get. Why don't we take a closer look at that unique camera setup on the rear, which provides us with a 12.3 megapixel sensor, capable of filming video in 4K at 30 frames per second. This is an impressively decent camera, especially given the age, and that's something Google has always seemed to do well. Plus, do a search for the Google Pixel Camera App APK and install that to get access to a number of newer features such as portrait mode and night shots that you would find on a Pixel, massively improving the overall experience. These are darn decent photos, even six years later, and I'd say this is likely better than most current budget Android phones that are probably double or triple the price of the 6P you use. And as long as you're taking photos in areas with generous lighting, you can really get some nice shots. Lighting is key and outdoors is best, but focused on naturally photogenic subjects like flowers, and the 6P really shines. Go indoors, or try to take photos at night, even with the night mode from the Google Pixel camera app, and that camera takes a nosedive real quick. Grainy, blurry images are all too common and are to be expected. A 
that's just kind of how it is with any smartphone camera from 2015. And even in recent years, camera sensors on smartphones are just so small, it's really difficult to take in enough light to produce a crisp or even usable image. Even so, I found myself continually impressed with the camera, just like I did with the 5X, which makes sense given they share the same hardware for photography. The selfie camera, on the other hand, is actually improved over the 5X, with 8 megapixels instead of 5, and this is a pretty good selfie given the age of the phone. But enough of my face there. All in all, I have to say the Nexus 6P really has managed to survive the test of time and stay more than usable six years later, something that can't be said for most phones from the same year. I wouldn't want to use the 6P for photos anymore, especially with how good smartphone cameras have gotten nowadays, but if I had to, I could make it work, and that's really all you can ask for at this point. You can make it work. Funny, I think that's a phrase that applies to the technical specifications as well. The 6P carries the Snapdragon 810 processor, which was top of the line, you know, in 2015, and three gigabytes of RAM, providing an overall adequate user experience that's helped massively by not needing to run any particularly impressive software. Android 8.1 Oreo is all you'll be able to use here without the typical custom ROM magic you can do with many Androids, and that's something that I'd certainly suggest looking into if you're interested. Today I'm taking the phone at face value as it was left by Google, and am not planning on hacking the mainframe, but if you're stuck on a Nexus 6P, I highly encourage you to explore all your options. But on Oreo, you're missing some new features from Android, such as proper system-wide dark mode, but you can still, of course, install the vast, vast majority of apps off the Play Store, and with the openness of Android, it's not difficult to customize the experience to your liking. Android 8 doesn't feel too out of date, and while it's been a while since the last security update, the phone is still more than usable. Performance is mostly smooth, and the basics from social media to some lighter gaming to video streaming on the big lovely display, it all works fine here. And if need be, this phone really could do the job even six years later. Not that you should try to use one six years later, as again, it is quite out of date, which means you're lacking newer features as well as potentially more importantly security improvements. But if you had to, you could. If you've got one lying around, it absolutely still will work great as a backup phone or perhaps a starter phone for someone younger. It certainly left me feeling impressed. But as with most used smartphones, don't buy one. I mean, that should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yes, I got mine for $75. And that was a pretty good deal for a phone that I really think could work in today's world, especially if you did some custom ROM stuff. But because battery life is so sketchy and it's not easily user replaceable, it's just a very high risk to buy a phone like this used. And it's only going to get older from here. It's already out of date. And every month, every year, it's just more and more falling behind in what current software can do, security updates, and slowly but surely, you will be able to feel the age. If you need a cheap smartphone, I suggest trying to up your budget and going for like a Pixel 4a or a 5a. The 5a is only sold in the US and Japan right now, which kind of sucks, but those phones are brand new, brand new battery. You get those awesome cameras that are in the best pixels. For most people, buying a six-year-old phone that's outdated and has potential for a bad battery shouldn't be an appealing option. That being said, all in all, I am impressed with the Google Nexus 6P. If you did buy one, I think you could make it work as a budget device. It's held up really well, like many of the Nexus devices, and it's truly a unique smartphone among the landscape as a Huawei phone developed by Google, the kind of collaboration we don't really see anymore to the same extent. The Nexus phones just had that magic and charm to them I really feel is missing from the Pixel. There was a novelty in having every phone made by somebody else, and perhaps that's simply nostalgia speaking, but regardless, I do like the Nexus 6P, and I'm happy to say it holds up about as well as one could hope six years after it launched in 2015. It might not be fast or have a great camera by today's standards, and it is on older software, but the phone is usable in every category with a big screen, good enough photography, and the ability to do the vast majority of things a brand new Google Pixel could do. And honestly, there's not much more I can ask for than that. So I think this is a good time to end the video. Any of you ever use the Nexus 6P? Any of you still using it somehow? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And we do have a Discord server link as always in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.